This week's episode is sponsored by The Soul Hub. The Soul Hub is on a mission to empower you to transform your life. We believe that if you are opened up to new ways of thinking, you can create your own reality. The cold water tubs are an easy and inexpensive way for you to experience the power of cold water therapy. Cold water therapy has changed countless lives. They hope to help you take control of your mental and physical health to connect you with who you truly are. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. He was a little bit late, so I called him. And when he, when I called him, somebody else answered the phone and they told me, yo, you brother's been stabbed and it was only around the corner from where I was so I ran around the corner by the time I got around the corner my brother's on the floor with paramedics around him. I'm talking there's blood everywhere it looks like a horror movie and when I'm looking at my brother my brother's looked at me and he says I don't think I'm gonna make it I don't think I'm gonna make it bro and I tell you something I can sit here and I can talk about it now but at that time I burst into tears because I think my little brother's gonna die and when I turned around I turned around, all I said was, somebody, somebody's gonna die for this. Somebody's gonna die for this. Up until this point, I've done some pretty fucking terrible things in my life. Like some things I'd never, would never mention on this camera. <clears throat> and I'm thinking to myself, is this karma for some of the shit I've done to people? Some of the things I've done? I think it could well be. What we've done, we've gone to where my bro was living at the time. He was with his, his missus, the mother of his child. And, um, we just had a shitload of guns in there, bro. <laughs> How'd shitload. you do? <laughs> no, yeah. we a lot. Mm -hmm. Shitload. <laughs> Going to this cupboard. And he just took him out. He had everything from, you know, pistols, nine mils, to four fives, different variations of shotguns. But just to go back to what I was saying, I think the thing that made me Mate, um, no longer have revenge in my mind was that, you know, ultimately, ultimately, the person that shot my brother ended up dead. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got three brothers from Birmingham, <laughs> Mad Mickey, we've just had Griller on, and we've got Shake. How are we, lads? Well, good man. Happy to be here, man. Happy yeah. to be here. Blessed, man. Just always heard, feeling blessed, yeah, man. Always just heard blessed. a younger brother story. Um, mm. He's like standing behind you as a bit of protection <laughs> there. <laughs> Sitting, actually. It's a um, mad story. Crazy, Three right? brothers and a sister been in prison together. Mm. It's um, pretty fucked up, lads, to be honest. I'm, like, this is the first time I've actually sat across from three brothers yeah um i'm actually quite fucking intimidated do you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> we're general giants really <laughs> so <laughs> brother story stab shot the younger brother as well yeah man. you're the older brother you mentioned you a lot in the podcast looked up to you he says would have followed mm. anything you done yeah um but we'll touch on that later as we go on in the podcast but I always go back to the start of my guest lads where you grew up and how it all began We'll start with you, Mickey. Yeah, man. I mean, I've. Where do you want Mickey, Mickey, Mad Mike. Mickey, Mikey, mm -hmm. Mad? I mean, not. Well, it's just Mike at the minute, isn't it? It's yeah. just Mike. Mike at the minute, it's just you Mike. Know. Y'all known as well, Mad well, Mikey. Yeah, man. That's what that's what the old call yeah. me. It's growing up, and some people still, you know, some people still they're still living on that. You know what I mean? They see me somewhere, say, "Hey, yo, you know, you know, who this guy is." You know, I just smile and yeah, just accept the compliments. Who was it for you, the being the older brother? Because I know he's went to private school at the start. Yeah, so. Our life was crazy, you know, mm -hmm. because there'll be some at some some points in our life where we lived in absolute luxury, and there were some points in our lives where we were really lived in poverty. I mean, poverty, poverty, you know, charity shops, clothing, that kind of poverty. Do you know what I mean? Uh, my father, I'm not sure if my, my brother touched on this in a previous mm -hmm. interview. My father, he's from Sudan, and he had a lot of connections and um, contacts in the Middle East. So when my father went to work, he was out in the Middle East. Now, I'm gonna be perfectly honest about my mom and dad's relationship. It was dysfunctional at the best of times. They were married for over 30 years, do you know what I mean? I was one of those, we, we are a family where we're lucky to have had mom and dad in the house a lot of the time. 
But when it was going wrong, it was going wrong. <laughs> so dad would like go back to the Middle East. He'd be working out there. Mum's over here. My mum's, I love my mum, beautiful woman, but she's crazy. That's probably where we got some of our crazy traits from. And at those times we were living in poverty. Do you know what I mean? When things were going right, dad would call for us, mum, kids, everyone would go out to the Middle East. We'd be living in luxury. We're living in palaces and shit, man. I'm telling you, the, the, we were, we're, we're, we're quite lucky because we're cultured. We were able to see other parts of the world. But just going back, when we were in Birmingham, England, he was born in London, by the way. Yeah, he says that. You know I mean? yeah, yeah, we were living, we used to live just down the road from here, Tots Hill. I'm old enough to remember all of this because of Tots Hill, yeah, Tots Hill yeah, Estates, yeah, 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 yeah. right? I'm old enough, I'm significantly older than all these guys. So these guys, and I used to change their nappies and feed them their bottles and stuff because when dad was over in the Middle East and his contact with my, my mother, it's not like today where you can be WhatsApping somebody and like if you, you couldn't afford a house phone, you didn't contact anyone, you get letters. Do you know what I mean? Those are the days we're talking about, late 80s, early 90s. So... Mum's out working, doing all those kind of things. I'm the one looking after the kids in the house. There's times where I'm not going to school for months on end because I'm looking after my little brothers and my sister. You know what I mean? Social services coming to the house, banging the door. Well, you know, we're, we're being quiet. I'm like, shh, everyone, keep the noise down because if these guys come, we're gone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that actually happened a couple of times. That actually, actually happened a couple of times where we actually got taken by social services and then my dad's had to come back into the country and my mum and my dad had to get together to get the kids back. You know what I mean? But growing up, it was hard mm. in, in Birmingham. When we grew up, like I said, man, we grew up in the ghetto. We grew up in the real slums. We grew up in Hansworth. Yeah. And at that time, Hansworth, it's still a slum and a ghetto now, but it's a bit more affluent now. Do you know what I mean? There's a bit more money in the area. Back then it was an absolute dump and we had nothing. And there were times where my mom's working literally free jobs and those free jobs are literally just paying the rent and the bills. There's no food in the house. When I say no food, I mean there's no food in the house. My mum is sneaking food in from work to bring home. And at the times where she couldn't do that, my little brothers are telling me they're hungry. And I'm telling you, I shit you not. I was never seeing my little brothers hungry. So there were times where I went out personally. They didn't know how, what I was doing, but I was coming back with food. That's true. You know the, funny, I mean? the funniest part about that though is I knew what he was doing and I completely respected it because I thought, Yo, he's going out there and he's bringing us back food. Yeah. And you know I was I was going out and I was sticking up anybody I could find. Did you feel like the father figure then? You have to step up 100% to the plate? during those times, yeah. And I felt step like I had, um, I wouldn't say a weight on my shoulder, but I felt like I had a- Extra pressure. A serious responsibility. I, do, I didn't even call it pressure. I just felt obliged. This is my duty. Um, my younger brothers, my sister, I have to look after them. There's nothing yeah. There's nothing more important to me in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have any kids then, anything like that. These were the people that meant the most to me in the world. And I'll be, da I'll, I'll go hungry, but I'll be damned if my little brother's telling me he's mm -hmm. hungry. I'd go out there and I'd rub people, you know what I mean? Literally just to go to a shop to buy food, to bring home for them to eat. Yeah. That's how That's how real it was at certain points of our life. Yeah, you, know you were mean? the oldest, so you'd have seen the brunt of it more with yeah. your dad not being there. Yeah. Your brother Griller says he used to see you fighting all the time. Constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that? Did, did you, you know, have to defend a lot more because they were still younger and a bit naive to what was going on? Um, yeah, and I also had balls the size of watermelons. So what would happen is, <laughs> in, you know, and I look, back, I look at it now, if it was like one of my little cousins or my kid doing this stuff, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you crazy? Look at all these people. Come on, you can't, can't fuck around with these guys. But at the time, my mentality was, hey, you're a human being, you know, I'm a human being too. We can either both bleed, you're going to bleed. Even if I, I tell you something, I'll go to hospital, but I'm telling you, if it takes me five years, I'm going to get you back. And that's how I kind of lived. You know what I mean? And the reason why I would say that I was in constant just war, I mean war, sometimes it was serious life and death shit, was because in our area where we grew up in, gang, the gang mentality was rife. Like, it still is really. It still is. It still, it still is. is really. And, Back then, it's not like now where there was all these subsections of little crews that kind of are in the area. There was, you were either in this crew or you weren't. And if you're not, you're an enemy. But I wasn't, I was, we, we, we've never been in a gang. Never, ever. Just all families. All family. Yeah. And we've, we've been affiliated because we grew up in a certain area. We may know the well, guys that live down the road. We were never, we were never in a crew. Well, we kind of created our own thing, right? We yeah. get into that mm -hmm. though. We, we can get into that. We'll get into that I'll touch more because yeah. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we can, I, I, we can touch on that and touch on the technicality that. of mm -hmm. that. But the fact of the matter is, it was all family. 
and we were just labeled a crew or because you knew the guy who grew up next door, he just so happens to be in a gang. You know that guy, you've been playing football with him since you were seven. Do you know what I mean? So you were affiliated, but we were never in a gang. I personally was never in a gang. I never claimed a gang yeah. in my life. That's what I was explaining though. See, yeah. I, was, I was breaking down like, yo, in one household, how much people there is, bro. Like our family's actually massive. Yeah. So yeah. It, even though it looked a certain way, this is like a bunch of cousins and brothers. Mm. And do you get what I'm saying? If you're from the ends, if you're from Hansworth, then you know this because you know who the families are, like the main, mm -hmm. there's like four or five main families yeah. and you'd know who they are. Do you know what I'm saying? So for in-house, it Out made of, sense, but if yeah. you're outside of this, it yeah. just looked like... Mm -hmm. look, you maybe look like you're just one big crew, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, what was happening was, I was never part of a crew and it was kind of stuck on me like, so you with us or you're not? <laughs> I'm not. And then the, the ghetto is governed by intimidation and psychology. That's a fact of the matter. That's, that's a fundamental truth, right? If these guys can't rope you in, they use intimidation and psychology to make you scared enough to submit. I'm an alpha male, look at me. That look like I'm gonna submit to somebody. Never in your life, it didn't happen. So what would happen is, I'm just now in beef. I'm just in beef with the guys that I live next door to. And the doorstep, yeah. <laughs> so in my own place where I'm living, I'm having to fight every day. And some of those, some of those fights weren't just me with my fist fighting. I'm like, yo, these guys could kill me here, so I will kill one of these guys first. That was just my mentality. I didn't, I didn't think of the consequence. I didn't think of what I could do, what was going to happen to that person, their family, or me or my family. It was just, yeah. I'm not going out like that. Why did you go to prison for the first time? I went to prison for the first time because I tried to kill someone. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I, mean? yeah. I tried to kill someone. I was probably. The first one, Joe, 15, 16? So 15, 15, 15 16. Kid, yeah, man. You were what, eight, nine? Yeah, man. Yeah, those man. Are, we was, we still in primary school. I remember. I remember we was in primary school, bro. Man, I used to go to fucking the yeah. visits, eating yeah. shit out of the vending machine on the prison yeah, visits. Yeah, yeah. Bro. What was that place like, up I in Liverpool? I remember I used to go Liverpool. It was went, Liverpool, man. They went rugby. Yeah. Rugby. Because where were you Unley. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. used to go up there and, and then I went yeah, to yeah, end up yeah, in yeah. Swinford Hall I went to a few you know you, you, they say you're on tour how hard they, was it with your dad not being there did, they, did you feel the shackles were off that you, you could know what was get funny, away with more what was funny was so I wouldn't say so because in my mum and dad's relationship my my mother probably wore the pants yeah and that's no disrespect to my father my father's a quiet man and my mum's a fiery woman so I'd say the person who um, you were scared of <laughs> was my mother came across. Mm -hmm. because my mother used to whoop my ass I mean I used to get fucked up to the point where I tell my mom now I'm like you should be in jail woman do you know what I mean you should be in jail do you know what I mean because of the way that we used to I used to get battered do you know what I mean and that probably contributed to my, my anger my issues my rebellion yeah yeah definitely 100% and um, but that's not to say that if my father wasn't there and, that's, he, and I'm not saying he wasn't there. I'm just saying that he, he wasn't able to be there in the capacity that perhaps he needed to be. To gauge his better. Yeah. How was it for mm -hmm. you seeing your big brother going to prison and seeing him fighting all the time? You know why it was? It's kind of like, it's one of them things, if you don't know any different, you just think it's normal, right? Yeah. So it was kind of one of them things where I just thought, oh, this is just how it goes. Like, this is just what people do. Um, even when he went to prison, don't get me wrong, man, we're mad upset because um, it was, we used to idolize my brother, you know what I mean? Like anything he did, we wanted to do, anything he's interested in, we was interested in. And it was just one of them things. So when he did go, that was that was a bit traumatic. However, seeing the fighting, the everything else, it's kind of like, well, that's just, mm -hmm. That's just how it is, right? Yeah. It's funny. It made me want to hurry up and grow up, though. Yeah. It, Listening to true. your brother saying traumatic and looking up to you and followed you anything you did, do you ever feel like you were part of them going to prison also? 110%. And I've said this to them before, you know, um, in our later years as I've grown up, I personally have had personal regrets because I know, for, I know that being the role model I was to my brothers and them idolizing me in the way that they did, that of course we're gonna follow every single thing I did. I set a terrible example for my brothers. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where I think to myself, had I had done things a little bit differently, the things that my brothers had gone gone through, that had never had gone through, you know? My little brothers here, who I said this before, I used to change his nappies, I used to feed him his food. He almost died twice. 
one of the times he was bleeding in front of me. You know what I mean? I'm not sure how deep he got into it in his yeah, interview. Went pretty deep but I'll tell him. you something now. We were meant to meet each other in the city centre of Birmingham and he was a little bit late, so I called him. And when he when I called him, somebody else answered the phone and they told me, yo, you brother's been stabbed and it was only around the corner from where I was so I ran around the corner by the time I got around the corner my brother's on the floor with paramedics around and I'm talking there's blood everywhere it looks like a horror movie when I'm looking at my brother my brother's looked at me and he says I don't think I'm gonna make it I don't think I'm gonna make it bro and I tell you something I can sit here and I can talk about it now but at that time I burst into tears because I think my little brother's gonna die and when I turned around I turned around, all I said was, Somebody, somebody's going to die for this. Somebody's going to die for this. And when I said that, <laughs> the, there's, a, there's a policeman, I'm talking about one, like a detective right beside me. He's come straight over to me and says, look, they, they know who we were at the time. Straight up, they knew who we were at the time. Because yeah. they, they considered us at, as the upper echelon of some of the activity that was going on in the city at the time. Do you know what I mean? And they've come up to me literally and said, look, we, just, we don't want a bloodbath. We don't want a bloodbath. They knew specifically who I was as well. So they came to me yeah. and said, we don't want a bloodbath. Can we just try and keep this carb? Keep this carb. My little brother's lying on the floor dying. Do you know what I mean? Well, so, um, just going into that a bit, I'm not sure how much you went into it. But like you said, I was going to go meet him there in, um, in town. I was with my bro and one of our cousins, one of our younger cousins. You know what I mean? And then uh, it's funny because I had an argument with one of these guys who's a... Someone on the other side. Up, you brought up, yeah, yeah. brought up, yeah? He was considered, you know, a rival gang member or whatever. So we seen this guy, he was on the bus, said, yo, there's them guys, man. Let's go have a word, you feel me? So we've gone to go on this bus and obviously we got into a bit of a rock because there's loads of them. I mean, there's about eight, nine of them at the time. There's just three of us. We're just scrapping it out. He's gone to the front, he's... It looks like we're just getting blows and then by the time we come off the bus, obviously we're having them up, you know what I mean? Like they're dead or cowering and shit. Not, not to try and sound heroic, but you know, that's just how it went. Then was coming off the bus, it's when I've turned around, but my brother didn't even realize he was bleeding, man. He's like, yo, what's, he literally was like, yo, what's yeah, that? I thought, I thought it was my hand. Yeah, he was like, yo, what's that? Then he turned around. When I've turned around, bro, <laughs> that like a movie, man. Oi, the blood in his neck, yeah, was squirting so high into the sky, bro. It fuck me. Oi. It just looked unreal, you know yeah. what I mean? Fake. I'm talking, yeah, it looked fake, man. It mm. was just talking mm -hmm. the pressure, it was just squirting as high as you could fucking see into the air. And when does that put pressure on you then? You to know, think? I gotta tell you something as well. So when he was in surgery, because they had to go to surgery, mm -hmm. they're telling me it's touch and go with him. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, the only reason these guys even do half of this shit is because of me. Because at this point now, I'm no longer the role model and the only person these guys look up to. There's like 50 people that look yeah, up to this me point. and yeah. listen to my every word. And I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking my baby brother could die. I'm here at this hospital. There's 50 guys asking me, oh, what are we doing? I said, what, what are we doing? But then there's another part of me saying, up until this point, I've done some pretty fucking terrible things in my life. Like some things I'd never, would never mention on this camera. <clears throat> and I'm thinking to myself, is this karma for some of the shit I've done to people? Some of the things I've done? I think it could well be. But then I also knew that the, the way in which, again, these situations are governed, the ghetto, the hood, this mentality, this rivalry that was going on in the city at the time. If nothing happens for this, it's over. As in, people will just be constantly doing this to you. They'll be constantly doing this to you because if they, if they see there's no, there's no repercussion, if they see there's no, like, at least an attempt, then you're, you're a victim. That's that's how it's it, that's how that's how it works. True. That's how it works. So even when you're thinking, man, this ain't worth it. Even if you were thinking this isn't worth it, look, people are dying, people are almost dying over this. You're just pressured into a situation where something's gotta be done. And we 
We certainly, we certainly yeah. took that very seriously. Do you know what I mean? We certainly took that very seriously. Can I mean, I, there were times. Getting to a point there, like, it's funny because, you know, we've been saying, like, it just made me think about um, when we think about shit that's normal. And obviously, my bro, you know, he's, he's critical right now at that point. And um, what we've done, we've gone to where my bro was living at the time. He was with his, his missus, the mother of his child. And um, we just had a shitload of guns in there, bro. <laughs> How'd shit you do? <laughs> no, we a lot. Mm -hmm. Shitload. <laughs> Going to this cupboard. And he just took him out. He had everything from, you know, pistols, nine mils, to four fives, different variations of shotguns, Rado, Terminator. We used to give them names, so we didn't Nickname just say them. what it was called. Like, <laughs> peeps, if I said, yo, Rado, now man would know what that is. If I said, yo, bring yeah, up the Terminator. Never, we'd never call, say something by- Over the phone, yeah. yeah. Like, no, mm -hmm. even if we were just around each other. So, so yo, like, you know, if we're in the crowd, bro, I yeah. might say something. These people don't know what I'm on about. You know what I was just on about, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now you can go, Maybe you, you know, want to go fetch that or something. But everyone else don't know what we're just talking about. Say, yo, remember the, um, what's the one? Eastwood? Yeah. Mm. Which was a... Um, Colt 45 revolver? Colt 45. It was a 4-4 rifle. You know, um, mm -hmm. lever action. Yeah. yeah. Called it Eastwood. You just called it Eastwood because you used to just see it in the cowboy movies, right? Mm. <laughs> so, so it was like, yo... But I remember just at that point where we're just there loading up, counting how much ammunition you got for some of these these gats because some of them are hard to get. And just thinking, yo, some like, yo, someone's getting it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But again, going back to one of my original points, it's like, that was just normal, bro. Like that wasn't, that was normal. You know what I mean? Your adrenaline yeah. wasn't even raised. Yeah, yeah it was just normal. Wasn't raised. And I spoke to Gorilla about, it's the effect it has on other people like your mum to see her son, a baby son in hospital, potentially 50 50 of dying, and then you just want to retaliate and do that to somebody else's son. Yeah. It's never ending. I'll tell you like, something about my mother definitely. as well. Mm -hmm. She's a tough old lady. She must have to she be. Is. I mean, yeah, the she must. toughest bird yeah. you'll ever see. I mean, my mum will. I didn't realise that until way later. My mum yeah. is like a tough lady, man. And she, I think, it rubbed off on us because it made us tough. It's almost unaffectionate, just just calculating everything yeah. we did. And um, I'm just- It's funny though, because see my mom here yeah, is the youngest out of her siblings. But I would say her kids though, are the most like-, like Probably revered The most maybe? serious, yeah. yeah. The most, the most- The cornerstone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though my mom's supposed to be the youngest and you know, it's female and then suddenly we just, Come, you know what I'm saying, and mm. bring a different. Energy. Where did that mentality come from? Then, from just three kids just trying to survive to then becoming violent, vicious prison. I think the household, well, bro. I think, yeah. I think the household in every up. situation. We grew up, we yeah, we grew up. In. We grew up in a tough house with a tough lady in a tough area. But you didn't realize what he taught yeah. you, bro. My my mom, yeah, he made you. You grow with my mom, bro you're going to understand who you are. Yeah, yeah, if that makes sense. When you go out onto the road, bro, no one's going to be able to tell you something. <laughs> yeah. If you um, grow around my mum, bro, you are going to go out there and no one's going to be able to tell you what to it's do. It's the bro. weirdest thing because is, is she, bones, she, she swears every other word. She smokes 40 <laughs> fags a bro. day. You know what I mean? She'll sit down there. She'll be talking to you like this, like you're one of the lads. But she speaks such strength into you. Like... You'll believe you're the greatest or whatever it is. If, if my mom was your mother, you'd believe right now there is not a single podcaster in the world that is, it can even rub shoulders with you. You will leave this place like I'm the fucking best podcaster that's ever fucking lived. And that's kind of how it was with us. And I also had a kind of a funny relationship with mom because even though she used to kick shit out of me all the time, she never actually to kick shit out of me for any of the bad things I was doing. It was never for that. It was other random shit. Do you know what I mean? That I felt like I didn't need to get the shit kicked out before. Shit, yeah. Bro. And I could tell That's my mom every single thing. Like I told her everything so she should be never, never be shocked That's if it right. came to her on her doorstep. Do you know what I mean? That's one thing. Well, yeah, I can say, you know, with us, with my you mom. Do that. 
we were just open. If anything, I probably didn't say to my dad. Yeah. Which is yeah. weird. My dad would know Because you think we're boys, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So we'd say this shit to our dad. Yeah, he says that. Mom, would you ever have a discussion with your dad about the life that you've led to try and get some closure in? Because as men, it's hard, too much pride, too much ego. Nobody wants to step forward first and address the situation. But there's obviously a lot of shit uncovered that needs to be addressed, I, I believe. Think, I certainly haven't. 100%. I was I saying haven't. no one else, bro. I was saying this. I don't think so. Certainly haven't. I've spoke, I've touched on little things as I've gotten older, but it's definitely a sit down people need to have because you, you'd be surprised, man. There's, <laughs> yo, you'd be surprised. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine about a lot of communication is key for anybody yeah. to relieve some pain and stress and trauma, like to watch three sons all be in prison at the same time. That's some fucked up shit, lads. Well, it's not yeah, like we were, it's not like we were, I, I, it's not like we were in prison though, and it's hard to say. It's, it's, it's a weird one. It's not like we was in prison and just was there for each other and had mm-hmm. each other's back like that. The scenarios weren't like that. It was like him over there doing um, what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. his on his journey, fucking. Surviving so to me. I'm over here doing my, and it's only later that we all we're able come to come together. back together. But it's not as even he's if you're unsuccessful, he's are still successful, he's are still very well educated, he's are still on the ball. It's mad how you still went down that other fucking route though. It's just when you are clearly it's, focused it's, on any other thing, you have been at the top of your game. You see, I think it's environment. Yeah, with you, with you though, yeah, and I don't even think even you realize this as much though. Mm. You see, when I was younger though, yeah. <clears throat> When I saw everything he was doing or scenarios he was in, I would think to myself, yo, I want to hurry up and get older and put myself in a position to be able to defend too. I was in scenarios with him when I was young and I couldn't do anything apart from watch. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If something happened to him, bro, I would have just had to watch that. So it's kind of one man down at my, that time. In my mind, yeah, bro, yeah. Yeah. in my mind, this was like a personal mission for me. I didn't say nothing to no one, but I knew in my head, I'm going to grow up, bro, and I'm going to, be a certain way and then it's like with the way I'm looking at him anyway like I said with whatever he's doing I'm looking and I'm thinking yo I like doing that thing I don't know if I fucking like doing it bro I just know he does it <laughs> so I'm gonna say I'm gonna go have a look at that too you know what I'm saying yeah. so you know I said you know if my brother I tell you, I tell you what went wrong yeah this is what went what? wrong when he was on the road if he had grabbed me and then said, no, 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 come with me still. But here, you're going to go do this sports over here instead. With me, but over here, though, and do this. I did that thing and I took it serious. Yeah. The problem was, though, yeah, I'm looking up to him, but he ain't bringing me with him. So even though I was on the road, I didn't go on the road with him. Yeah. yeah. So we were, he ain't yeah. bringing me yeah. with him, but I still want to be on the road, But you're bro. still a reflection yeah, of him, yeah, but you're still not even... So yeah, yeah. So he ain't that, he yeah. ain't bringing me... It was two yeah. different generations. Two different yeah. generations. Yeah. So yeah. in my mind, this is how I'm seeing it, though. I'm just seeing it like, yo, my, he ain't bringing me. Then if this person over here comes now, this is another older person from the hood who I'm looking at in a certain way, and they say, hey, come over here a second. I'm going to be like... All right, cool. Because in my mind, I've still got this point to prove mm. to my bro. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy as well, you, you know, saying? because yeah. half of those dudes, I never liked them. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah, real, yeah. Shit. Like, real shit. I'm on the road, bro, just... when I'm like 15, yeah. looking for people, bro. And I'm like, when I think about it now, I was like 15, 16, bro, literally getting the call. Like, yo, you got that there? All right, I'm coming to pick you up. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and this is older man, bro. Mm-hmm. And this is literally because, though, I'm thinking in my mind, you know, this is, this is a person that can get me to the point I want to be at. Yeah. And you know, you know, you know, personally, personally, I, he knows this now because I tell him this now. I always felt like those guys were trying to target my little brother because they could never get me in there. Trying to manipulate him, groom him, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. So that's how I always felt. But did I you see felt- them though as obviously but you've seen the mistakes your brother was making by being with them, but yeah. You were like them also. By, exactly. By this time, I can't say, what am I, I going to yeah. say to him? <laughs> I'm going to say, oh, don't do that. And I say, brother, you do that every every Tuesday yeah. and Thursday. Well, you know you the know craziest I mean? thing though? I literally remember him one time though, yeah, speaking to me and my brethren and actually saying, because you know, it's not a case of him not saying, you know, he said to us, you know, yo, don't do A, B and C, don't chill with Rare Rare, don't do this. I literally remember walking, walking off, yeah, he was in Hatred's yard and I literally remember walking off, bro, and thinking to myself, you was at the top of the stairs. Right. I don't know if you remember this, He's at the top of the stairs and you literally spoke to me and that other red skin you. And yeah. then basically, after you finished saying it, bro, I swear down, I've walked off and I thought to myself, <laughs> I thought to myself, 
yeah, I'm definitely still going to do this road thing. Like, but he <laughs> full on gave a, a big old lecture and I was like, Psh, I got this mission in my head, bro. I need to be, I'm going to become how I'm going to become so I can do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? And even though I had these older peeps who almost like saw this road potential in me, bring me over here and say, yo, come do this, show me how to do this and all these things. In my mind, bro, I went really being, it's like, this sounds weird, yeah? Even though they had their intention, bro. In my mind, I had my intention. I wasn't actually being used, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's like I was, but I was actually mature it's enough, like, bro, to actually understand, nah, nah, I'm getting the information. It's like, I it was on work experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, nah, you know what I'm saying, bro? I literally understood, though, I'm mm-hmm. actually getting the knowledge I need to get mm-hmm. to become who I yeah. want to become. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's funny because obviously when my two bros talk, because this, this this is the funny thing, because he's the oldest, then it's me, then it's the one that looks the fucking biggest. <laughs> yeah. So the, the the thing is, even though when I say my big bro was in the most active stages of maybe what he was doing, I probably went around then because he was a bit young. But once he came out of jail, we was pretty close. So there's a lot of shit that, my bro Which used is weird, to do. I wasn't, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird, weird because we're only one year apart, but them two were close. So, so mm-hmm. what's really weird is that I'd have been with my big bro doing shit, but on the flip side, we're so close in age. Like we're just we got mm-hmm. the same peer group. Like so, we'll be on the road close mm-hmm. together every yeah. day doing and, shit as well. So I, I was, think, but I went with him though. Yeah, and yeah. I think that was mainly yeah. because I was I was protective of him, but I was like, I shall be bro, super. Like yeah. I don't want him to do anything. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Anything. And it, to the point where, like, if I could get a call, I could be anywhere, get a call and shakes in trouble. I'm like, okay, I'm relaxed. I'll go down there. Let's handle that. If I got a call that he's in trouble, I've shut places down because he was in there and I got told this, like the places don't exist anymore. They've closed down. They're no longer open because I got a call that he's in trouble there. Do you know what I mean? And that's me when I'm trying to chill. I'm trying to, I'm like, I, I want to try this family thing now. I want to try and get off all this stuff. And I get a call saying, I'm like, my, my, my baby brother. No, no, no. Coming down there now. The places are no longer open. They don't trade anymore. Do you know what I mean? And that's because of my, of, of, <laughs> I've only just had to adjust my way of thinking to be like, he's an adult now with his own kids. Because you know how he is. Have you got, you got any brothers? Yeah. Younger sister, brothers? Sorry, sister. Younger sister? Yeah. You always still see them as the baby. Course, you don't man. ever think of them as this big grown mm-hmm. adult that's doing their own thing. And it, it, it took me a while to adjust my way of thinking, for, particularly for my youngest brother. Do you know what I mean? And particularly because of the things he went through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. With, with almost losing his life twice. Do you think that's a test from God, though? To, it's, to, it's, to give you the kick up the ass to then stop doing what you are doing? I think it was definitely a challenge, but I think it, it did at the time. You got to understand we were young and not much guidance, so we kind of just did what we thought yeah. was right but, but, but at the time. But even then, it was that mentality, that mentality of, but did you die, bro? <laughs> yeah. You're good, man. You're yeah. good, though, right? Come on, let's, yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, back to real. it. For That's real? We have never, I'm going to tell you something. The other day I was speaking to my brother. I don't know if you've mentioned this. Um, and I had to say to him, you know what, brother? I've never ever asked you if you're all right. I've never asked you. I said, bro, are you okay? Do you want to talk about this? What do you, what do you go through? Because our mentality, being in a girl, being being raised like we're in the like Stop military, where where you know, we're, we're soldiers in the street, like that's how it was. Just like that's a, that's you like didn't a, die, brush that shit off. <clears throat> let's let let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And that's how well, you just have to be tough. You know what I mean? So we never even asked. I've never even asked him if he's all right. Mm-hmm. It was only the other day I asked him, and I don't think he even answered me. The craziest thing though, it's probably shocked by it though. It's 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 a thing where we never even <laughs> yeah. thought about it. He's never had therapy. He's never had. Mm-hmm. We never asked him if he's all right. There's never been any guidance, no counselling, nothing. It was just, just brush that shit down, off. Yeah. Brush that shit. If you got a few <laughs> scars, they've added character to your face. You're good. You're all right. Let's go. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And that, that was that it. shit. Speaking about it, even you now, you're free speaking. You probably don't realise it, but after this, you probably feel a big weight off your shoulders mm-hmm. because you're just speaking some yeah, truth, man. You're just speaking some fucking facts. Like yeah, he's a probably. I don't know. It's different, like, uh, ch- things have changed. It's very rare, yeah, you get opportunities, like say, to communicate in this way, you know. So, like, so me and my bro, yeah, we used to clash a lot. Yeah. When I was <laughs> yeah, young, these two, like, these a couple two years back, bro. Like, we seriously <laughs> used to clash. Like, I, I, sometimes, I, sometimes I didn't even understand how these two chilled. Because I'd, I'd think to myself, bro, how the fuck, like, I, I don't know, bro. We just didn't. <laughs> well, together, you get me? Mm-hmm. The craziest part, though, is, 
it's actually almost like teaching someone to be a certain way than not liking the way you've taught them to be. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. felt like a failure, but to all show, that's why he holds his head. Let me show you something. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say he said something to me, then I would talk what I'm saying. But you see, the thing is, if I, if I would do that, yeah, then we'd get into something. Yeah. But the truth of the scenario is, I've been taught to be someone to have to have to do that and fucking myself. have the balls yeah. <laughs> my balls grew bro because yeah. I was taught that <laughs> yeah. way yeah. and then I'm not used to anyone fucking doing that so then we're clashing <laughs> yeah. well, I mean. well we're clashing because of the way you told me to be bro <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so now but it's funny because these are only things you learn later yeah yeah we did mm -hmm. we did we figured it out we when did you get into out. MMA Mickey? Um, I got into you know what it's funny I got into MMA in about 2000 and what seven about all okay. seven. That's when I first the, walked into the gym. gym. You want to know the truth, I, I, and I'm I'm quite candid about this, right? So, <laughs> how I actually got into it was totally by accident. Um, I got into another fight, but it wasn't even really a fight. What happened was I, I can scrap. I've always been able to scrap, oh. right? And uh, I walked up to a cupboard. We just finished. What was doing? Football. football. We used to organize yeah, like football, little football yeah, games. Yeah, we used to get yeah, some yeah, of the guys yeah. from the ghetto That's together. Yeah, we used to get some of the guys from the hood yeah, together yeah, and be like, after. "Yo, let's go to to Oakland's. We didn't even pay. We just bust open Oakland's it." Was, um, you know Laura what I'm talking Road? about? Laura, Laura, Laura Road, Laura Road, Road. Yeah, Laura Road. Yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone that knows knows. There's like the Astro Turf pitch, and you know we're from the ghetto. We're not paying. Like we just walk in there, and the guys would just have to be like, "Yep, yeah, we'll open the gate. Let us through." Um, we finished playing a game, walking down the road, and there was somebody in a car, and I thought I knew the guy. So I've walked over to the guy, and I was like, yo, what's up? But <laughs> there's about, what, 15 of us walking? Yeah. And he just stumps out of the car and punched me straight in the face. Just straight punched me in the face. But when he's punched me in the face, he's put his dukes up, and he's like, head movement, head bobbing. I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on here? It's like, Mike Tyson's in front of me. Now, don't get me twisted. There's about 10 of us with shanks on us and all kinds of stuff. So even I've gone to whip out my shank and I thought, fucking hell, I realized it's a misunderstanding. Anyway, I remember going home thinking, I know it was a misunderstanding, but that shit ain't never happening to me again, where I feel like I need to shank someone and they've got their fists up. Do you know what I mean? And the guy looked like he knew what he was doing, like he was yeah, tasty. Guy, 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 it's, guy, it's, guy, it's, guy, it's a guy, situation. Guy, yeah, guy, yeah, it's, it's a situation where you should always feel like, listen, even if you're going to... Shank you up, bro. We should always be able to beat you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be, yeah, 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 so yeah, it should yeah, be like yeah. a choice. Like, <laughs> you know guy, what? I chose to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I could always uh, punch uh, you up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not because I can't yeah, beat yeah, you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm scared. I need to do so that. The, guy, the guy's throwing his fists and showing some head movement. Mm. Guy looked tasty and sharp. I was like, fuck <laughs> it. No, bro. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can one on one this geezer. So I remember I went back yeah. and thought, that's never going to happen to me where I feel like I can't have a one on one fight because it's never happened to me before. I've always just been able to scrap. I thought, fuck this. I've gone back and um, looked on the internet. And them days, it's like, it's not like now you can just look on your phone. It was like one guy on the street with a computer in the internet. So you go to that one guy's house and you all sit around his computer. Huh. And um, I didn't even know what it was called, man. I was typing in no rules fighting, no holds barred <laughs> fighting, <laughs> fucking death matches, <laughs> all kind of shit I'm typing into this thing. Do you know what I mean? And uh, eventually a guy named Vitor Belfort came up and I don't know if you know Vito Buff, he's like an MMA legend, former UFC champion. And he was kicking the absolute fucking shit out of people. No gloves on. Kicking him in the head. I was like, oh shit. This is what I got to learn, man. And um, I walked into the gym. And you know, the funny thing about it is the first gym I walked into, there was no coach or anything. It was just the bags and me. And I remember I was kind of teaching myself like how to punch, how to kick. I didn't know any of this shit. And I was going there twice a day. I was going in the morning and I was going in the evening. And this is what actually made me make the transition from being on the street to eventually being in a gym and no longer being on the street, no longer being active. And I was doing that by myself religiously because I remember just thinking, no one's going to be able to fucking touch me again. I'm going to kick this <laughs> shit out of anyone who comes near me. And eventually I made a transition from there and I started training with um, the guys over at K-Star Birmingham, just a world-renowned gym. Um, they do a lot of Thai boxing, but they do some MMA. I eventually became uh, um, an amateur champion with um, the guys at K-Star and my coach. I mean, here's the judge. Let's go back a little bit. When I first walked into K-Star, I thought I could throw a punch and a kick. And I was getting the shit kicked out of me there by the actual fighters. Eventually, I started picking it up pretty quickly. And the coach at the time, Guppy Madaha, he turned and gone, you know, you're pretty good at this, man. You know, you should probably fight. 
And I was like, get the fuck out of it. Have you seen what those guys do to each other in that cage? There is no way I'm stepping. I don't want that to happen to me. A couple months later, he's come back to me like, bro, you, you, I reckon you really should fight. I was like, Gop, you're going to have to get the fuck out of here. I mean, I just, I'm not doing it. A few months later, persuaded me. So now... Back then, I didn't even tell people I was fighting. My first few fights, no one even knew I was fighting. Grabbed my shorts, the gym bag, my brother Shake, my missus at the time, my coach in a little fucking car, doo -doo 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 -doo, three, four hour drive to wherever the fucking fights are. Just turn up and scrap. And the first fight, I turned up, kicked the shit out of the guy in like a minute and a half. So I was like, that guy must have been fucking shit. For me to kick the <laughs> shit out of him for in a minute and a half. It must be wank. Gone away, come back a few weeks later, another fight, kick the shit out of the guy in like two minutes. I'm like, okay, he must be shit too. Like, why are you guys feeding me shit, guys? Come on. Went back, another show, kicked the shit out of the guy again, and like inside around. I'm like, you know what? The guy, coach might have a point here, you know. He, I'm destroying these guys. And then from there, I believed it. And I went on to be amateur level. I went on to be like five time national champion, two different weight classes, heavyweight and light heavyweight. Um, I'm still an active, went on to pro, met still an active pro fighter. Um, and I was, I'm still currently signed to Cage Warriors, which is like a subsidiary, it's like a partner of the UFC. And the gym I train at Renegade MMA, um, I've got guys like Leon Edwards there. Yeah, I spoke Fate, to Leon yeah. a couple of days ago. I did, yes. Yeah. There you go. Leon was there. He's fighting Nate Diaz. Yeah, he's fighting Nate Diaz. Yeah, so I'm one yeah, of his main yeah, training yeah, partners, yeah. man. That's I'm one of his sparring partners. Fighter, Diaz, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Fucking sick. So, yeah. so yeah. Jeff, oh, that, didn't that fight get caught up? No, yeah, but they're fighting again in June. Oh, so they got caught up. Yeah, yeah, yeah they got to yeah, postpone yeah, yeah. So I'm one of his main. I'm one of his main training partners so for that. So can you, at your age, still fit, still strong? Could you ever go to the UFC? I could. I could do. For me, and my my age, I'm 37. I'm going to be 38 soon. So I've probably got a few good years left in me, two, three good Still years. Still fucking look good, but man, yeah, you're looking great trying, shape, man. I'm tell you what, these guys are getting younger. And yeah, it's bastards. not like him, when I started, <laughs> trust me, bro. When I started, yeah. MMA was a, a, a new sport. Mm -hmm. MMA was, was young. The guys weren't getting into the game yet. Leon's one of the few guys who got into it when he was like 15, 16. When I started, I was in my mid-20s. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have a fight till I was about 30. Ain't that scary fight. though how your mindset you guys know the potential of the music as well with mm -hmm. the names that he's mentioned earlier yeah. Wiley, Stormzy's, K Coke, exactly legends in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. If you if you had put if you had focused your energies into something more earlier. positive, exactly you could have changed the fucking yeah. world, man. Changed yeah. the game. Precisely. I mean, we still can because yeah, I, I, I believe that as long as there's still breath. Yeah, yeah. This is the start of a new process, yeah, right yeah. Now, bro. Mm -hmm. I believe you know that if there's as long as there's breath in your body, you can still do it. Nelson Mandela was in jail for twenty seven years of his life. He came out and he changed the fucking world. You know apartheid in mm -hmm. South Africa stopped. Do you know what I mean? That's the way I see it. Um, and it went on to be the Rainbow Nation. But for 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 me, when once I had come off the road, started going to the gym, and it was like, mate, if you don't keep on going to the gym, the guys in the gym are going to kick your ass. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so you yeah, not I could like getting beat then? Do you hey? hate getting beat? Do you always hate getting beat in life? Like always worry that somebody I, can I, potentially I, I, beat no, you? No, I don't, I don't worry about it. I, my, you know what, to be fair with you, I'm going to be frank, my last two fights, I tried to drop down to middleweight, I actually lost those to what I believe is lesser competition because I can beat those guys, but I tried to. I tried something new, tried to go down a little weight, so I'm going back up weight class, uh, where I didn't lose a fight. But um, I'm not afraid of failure or defeat because it's not the failure or defeat that 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 you're judged by or that makes you, it's what you do when you get back up. Yeah, which is the main thing. Do you know what I mean? If you, anybody if you can, it's not, the, it's not the thousand times you fail that people care about, it's the one time you succeed. Mm -hmm. That's what history judges you on. So were you changing your life when uh, Gorilla got shot? No. Were you still No, active? I was still, when Gorilla, when Gorilla got shot, yeah. I was trying to kill people. Yeah, still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm going I'm to I'm be straight with you. I'm going to be straight with you. There, there's, I mean, when, when he got stabbed, we went out for the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can. Do you remember the time when? I mean, we can talk about this now. Saying this shit usually does one thing or the other, right? It yeah, usually... it brings you in deeper, or you, you get out. Yeah. And we didn't get out. That's 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 the honesty. Yeah, that's that's the, the, the honest truth. Yeah, when um when he when he got stabbed, I remember there was even we were we were going out regularly trying to. Yeah, man. But well, bro, I did something to anyone, even if I thought they had something to do with <laughs> the, the person, like as in like there was in a picture with them. There was one time when we was out know? when we were out. We we we, we you know. You got your mask, your gloves, your whatever you got on you trying to do something to somebody. So we were there, with a pistol on each of us. We've hopped out. We thought we saw people that do you remember this? We thought we saw when, who um, we thought top we of saw, Hansworth. Top of Hansworth. 
and we've realized, oh, it's not who we think it is. It's some guys that we know. So we actually get into a conversation. So remember, this is just normal. Like we're not <laughs> worried. We don't have no adrenaline going. Listen. At the time though, at the time, remember I told you, if we go back, the police have said, yo, we don't want a bloodbath. The police are very aware that this whole thing can go south. So I'm talking, there's armed that, convoys. That everywhere. Everywhere, mm -hmm. driving through driving through the area. I wanted listen, them. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Listen is what's happened, yeah. We're there talking to the to your man. He's one of our one of our mates, he's asking how he is because he's still recovering, you feel me? But like he said, we got the call that, you know, some guys are there, so we've gone there. Like like he did rightly say that we both, you know, we're ready for the situation, but he's got his back turn, yeah? So I can see up the road, armed convoys coming down. Now, if I was a police officer, I would have stopped us fucking cunts because we, we got looked, ski masks. We, looked, we didn't we, wear, we had ski masks on our head, bro. We look like- Just we, rolled up. We look like we're trying to- Leather gloves, it's middle of the day, man. <laughs> <laughs> middle of the day, man, yeah. Ski masks rolled up, yeah. Leather gloves on, black towel, old trainers on. Man, I would have fucking stopped. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing, bro? You know what I mean? You look suspicious, bro. Mm -hmm. This Arv convoy comes up and I shit you not. It is crawling as fast as a man does a slow walk, bro. They're There's about really six, analyzing us. about six cars it was. They're all, they're all hanging out the whip, MP5s and all, yeah? And I'm just looking at this and I'm not being funny, but I was in a mentality that just like my bro kind of had and we all have, which is, we're all men in it, so we all can bleed. So the truth is, it matter if, if there was like one or two, it's like, yeah, fuck it, game in it. Like, let's just see how this goes. But when you see six cars and everybody's got automatic weapons and you're thinking to yourself, I got about nine in here and I ain't really practiced shooting. <laughs> the, the way, the way, the way yeah. that these guys are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These man, these man are, they're these serious, bro. Yeah, they'll yeah. be shooting. They're, yeah. Yeah. they're, they're yeah. serious, yeah. bro. Yeah. 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 And I'm just looking like, bruv, well, how the fuck's this gonna go? So I'm looking at my bro at the time, I'm saying, yo, yo, yo. I saying, yo, listen, listen, listen. Don't yeah. turn around, don't turn the fuck around, don't turn the fuck around. The arm convoy's coming up right now. He hasn't turned around yet. So I said, yo, just carry on talking to my man, act like. Act like you're fucking you just, just talking. Act natural. So yeah. I said, just act normal. I said, it, we're carrying on talking like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm Laughing, kidding. joking. Parts doing this, man. Parts <laughs> doing this. And the truth was, I wasn't really even worried about even if we got arrested at the time and, you know, taken in because I figured it out. You know what I mean? Well, at the time you would have got caught this is with the a risk we're taking. firearm. Yeah. It would have been maybe five. Four or five years. Four or yeah. five years. It would have been minor at, at the that time. time yeah. At the time, it's probably more now. So we're thinking, I'm thinking, that's not too bad. The problem was is your man had something on him which would have got him life. Have a grenade or something? Silencer. Yeah, that adds so, an extra five, ten or nine. Well, at the time- Also, it's, also um, I'm on a lifetime ban, ban. from- Yeah, those I've kind of things. as well, whatever he's had on you, you're fucked. So me, I was going away for a basic yeah. So I'm just life. thinking, it's fucked. I'm just thinking for fuck's sake, man. You know what I mean? But then this fucking convoy fucking crept past, man. The magic thing, though, is the amount of time shit like that has happened. Though. Standard. Do you think he's with a short back? Who knows, man? Uh. Who knows at the time? I certainly wasn't going to run away. Nah. They'd have definitely shot after you. 100%. Off, yeah, they'd have definitely shot after mm -hmm. you. But I mean, a couple of those situations happened to us before. Literally. Yeah. Same thing. Similar remember kind when, of things. And when he's, um, when one time, Went to go test something. And, um, oh shit. And you yeah. know, we didn't even get to because, you know, we started walking. We couldn't have been out of the house for like. You spotted them though, right? Couldn't have been out of the house for like 40 seconds, bro. Mm -hmm. We've like walked around the corner. The luck of it. <laughs> Yo, we walked around the corner, up the road a little bit. Was it you or you? Was Whether you? The, the police or the yeah, yeah. It was you. Yeah. yeah. So boom. No, you, you had it. Yeah, I okay, had it. Okay. okay. So we're walking now. We ain't got nowhere near this place to go test this how we said we were going to. What is it? The Fed car that pulls up. Yeah, the Fed car. Nobody oh, walking. Nah, nah, they pulled up they on pulled us, up. man. I jumped out. So imagine yeah. we're walking, bro. As we're walking, just doing nothing, you know. Uh, but yo, the police car just pulls straight up to us. We're like, oh shit. Because he's got this on him. 
we <laughs> they say they want to stop and search because they're saying no we can smell weed the funniest thing is your man smokes weed now, but at the time he didn't even smoke. smoke before, yeah. So none of, none of <laughs> us none smoked. Of us smoked. Time, yeah. None of us smoked. But so we're saying, could, what the they fuck? They could smell it though. But the funniest decide. thing is, he fought fast though. There's a couple of guys walking on the road. That the funniest smoking. thing we could smell, we could smell yeah, yeah. the weed in the air. So yeah. we're thinking, fuck, where's that smell come mm-hmm. from? We don't have it on us. Mm-hmm. Like I can understand why they were coming up to us to stop what us. What were you in prison for? What were you on for, mate? Mate, I've been in for um, attempt murder a couple of times. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he's been in for similar things. How do you think your life would be now if Grilla was dead? Because my uncle's lost two brothers to murder, yeah. and my mum's lost two brothers to murder, and it kind of fucking destroys your family. Like, yeah. Yeah. he's a blessed to it, still be here, yeah, Lance. I think, it definitely, I think it definitely would have. I tell you something as well. What made me, because I even after I kind of stepped away, you know, like MMA changed my life. My kids. Mm-hmm. I think the the biggest turning point was having my children. Because having my son, my son's over there. The, the tall fella you saw yeah, walking in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't believe it. I look like my mate, right? Hell, I thought I was one of the boys <laughs> coming in. <laughs> my, my only son, right? Do you know what I mean? So I didn't want him. I mean, he's, I'll tell you something. He's listening to this shit now. I think it's probably the first time he's ever heard it. Yeah. I never, ever wanted him to know anything I'd ever done in my life or anything that I was associated with. So I began changing my life because... You know, you've always, you've always you met the, meet those guys um, that they're a prick because of who their big brother is or they're a prick because of who their, dad their dad is or some mm-hmm. shit. I didn't want that guy. I didn't want my son to be that guy. Yeah. So I taught him a whole different set of values. Do you know what I mean? And I think one of the biggest things that changed me was having my children and realizing, okay, these guys can end up exactly like me or worse. I was, I was smart enough to navigate certain situations and I've never been seriously hurt, but look how, look how close the person next to me is that did get seriously hurt. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the other things is even when he, those things did happen to him and even though I was stepping away, there are situations I still went and did. I didn't even tell my brothers about because revenge was still in my mind. The other day we were talking, I was talking to my brother and I was telling him my situation where I went to someone's home by myself. I went into the house with murder on my mind to find that person didn't live there anymore. And when I spoke to him, he's going, you never told me you did that. I was like, yeah, I did that. He goes, well, no, you must've been fucking serious because none of us were even with you. I was on my own. Do you know what I mean? And so all of those things I was still doing, even though I said I'd stepped away, revenge is still on my mind. Like these people have done these things to my brother. I still want to do something too. The craziest I, thing is though, and I feel like I feel like even if we used to turn around, you know, like as much as we know each other as brothers, yeah, the amount of stuff he's done, I don't know everything. It's true. The amount of stuff he's done, I don't know everything. Yeah, the amount of stuff I've done, he don't know. Yeah. Much. literally, we wait, know wait, more wait, wait, to understand as well is that um, I think my bro was touching on it is um, you know, we've all been prison, we've all been prison at different times. You know what I mean? So there's times things. when. I'm no longer his, around. No longer, he's but we, something. us are. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. times when he's not around, but us two are. Yeah. There's times when I'm not around and they yeah. are. You yeah. feel me? So it's like. You're saying that one time we were awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, one know, time all of us were gone. Yeah. So we yeah. all had our own little paths and journeys yeah. that we took. You know what I mean? Have you ever, I, like, never, none of you had counseling, none of you ever spoke never, to anybody yeah, to yeah, understand that? It's funny, it's funny though, you know. Because you've kind of took it all in your stride. The only the only time I've ever had counseling for anything. And I can talk about this now. By the time it was very difficult, it had a little bit, and that was when my daughter passed away. Yeah, Sorry yeah, to hear that, yeah. yeah. So you know, my, my daughter passed away. She was very young, and I, I had bereavement counselling for that. But even that was tough to do because I'm from an environment where you don't talk about your pain. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But just to go back to what I was saying, I think the thing that made me st- Mate. Um, no longer have revenge in my mind was that you know, ultimately, ultimately, the person that shot my brother ended up dead so I don't know dead now so did any user get ripped in from it straight away you know I what's f- I, t- I tell you what's funny I'm gonna, I was exp- in I'm gonna explain something to you oh, we we we, 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 we the, re- the reason we, we always suspected who did what they did but I'm gonna tell you something right now yeah you know when that happened to him I'm gonna tell you something this ain't no coppers are corrupt as fuck right they've come to me personally and told me who did it they've, to- they've told it's me funny though, man. <laughs> want to start stuff so they've yeah, come yeah, to yeah, me the dude, the dude, bro. they've they come do. to me they and they've told me stuff. who made the call who opened the door who fired the shots what vehicle they were in but they said we can't they didn't because nobody's talked my brother my brother's never spoke about anything that's happened to him 
they were like, okay, but, uh, and they came literally and told me everything. I, I knew everyone that was involved. You know what I mean? So it, it's funny how in in one sense, we had the police that were up our ass for how long? Do you know what I mean? I mean, for that situation, he, he ended up with a, a charge for, um, was it was it the same one where you ended up with the charge for am the ammunition? The oh, shit. Ammunition? When the, um, yeah, so so basically um, what's happened is, um, well, fucking hell, might as well say it now, yeah? So basically what's happened is um, that's happened to my bro. You feel me? And it's kind of like, you know what? And when that happened with my bro, when he got shot, you got to understand that it wasn't even rivals that we considered like, yo, they're the opposition. Yeah, was this was a whole new yeah. thing. This People was like new. all internal. Yeah. This is guys that we grew up with. We saying, yo, the fuck is this? The whole scenario never made it, sense. Yeah, it didn't make sense because as far as we concerned, we was, we, we're talking about people that are close as family, like as in they will be at family events and shit. You feel me? So it was kind of like, this don't make, exactly like you said, it somebody, don't make sense. But for me, looking from outside, as if somebody was stirring the pot, somebody well, was feeding somebody information well, and I, mixing I, things, even I, with the police, that's their way of cleaning stuff up. Somebody gets murdered, somebody gets bro. lifed off, Listen, he's are off. Yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah. yeah. crazy because, and this is why I kind of, again, now myself, I'm not really active like that. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've done a lot of jail, whatever. Um, things have changed, but there's shit that makes you think. Yeah. And this is a scenario that makes you think, because my brother was shot. Like he said, they know what's happened. They know what did it. Obviously, we're not going to fucking talk. You know what's going on, man. If you're going to do your job, do your job. If not, is what it is. But one thing I do know is they seem to have a particular interest in what we do. Yeah. For instance, <laughs> yeah, you it happened to my bro. Um, I said, you know what? Fuck this. Uh, we gotta, we gotta make it. Um, send a message here. Yeah? And. Uh, my bro sometimes they think that I'm the crazy one. Like I'm cool and chill back, but it could be a bit extreme more sometimes. More rational than the other yeah. the, of us. <laughs> and I say, we all have our moments, man. I yeah. said, you know what it is? Um, we're gonna go get not a normal. We, we're gonna get something really heavy here to send a really serious message. You know what I mean? Like so, we can't be talking about firing some pistols or something. You know what I mean? We yeah. Gotta, send a serious message here, you know what I mean? So I've arranged for that to happen. Um, for whatever the reason was, um, it's kind of quite funny because my bro was supposed to come check me at the time so I could go get, you know, the serious the fucking, heavy the, artillery. The, the, yeah, yeah, the serious yeah. piece of heavy artillery, really, you know what I mean? That's when the Uzis came out and that. <laughs> well, 7.62 mm -hmm. ammunition we're talking, you know what I mean? Serious stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we're saying, yeah, what? Well, your man was supposed to be there for me to have it. It's supposed to be with me. Yeah. Now it's supposed to be with me the day so we can go do the thing. Police. First thing in the morning. No, I'll tell fucking, you what. I'm going to the fucking, I'm coming from the gym. Are you coming from the gym? This is when they, when they were in the yard. When they came to the yard, man. So, so remember you were supposed to come to the yard the night before so I could go patting it. So I could go grab the stuff. And then the next day, we got raided, I'm so I'm supposed to have it. Was you there? Yeah, I was there. Oh, we were supposed to a different time. Oh, okay. Oh, so we got raided a lot of time, but this time was for a different thing. You know what I mean? So we got raided. Oh, that literally the very next day. Yeah, yeah. Now it leads you to believe, bro. How the There's fuck? There's a fucking leak somewhere. Did they fucking know? <laughs> Listen, Rose it's just by the chance <laughs> of God that we don't have it. And I'll tell you the truth. I tell you the truth, bro. We're not gonna go to jail for something like that, bro. You would have to. <laughs> you'd have to do your thing and just, you know, go out like bloody Scarface or some shit. You know what I mean? Cause it's, you're not gonna see yeah. the light of day if you get arrested with something like that, bro. But they came there the day, they raided the house specifically for firearms and ammunition. And I'm thinking, the fuck? How, you know How the fuck there, did you know no, no, to no, come no, here no, the exact it's, day it's, when it's supposed to be here right now yeah, there was for a, the firearms and ammunition? 100% leak. But the screws don't have the thing. The, yeah, the, 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 they got the, the ammunition. More snatches, there's more snatches now than there is fucking police. And yeah. this is what I'm saying. This is why I said it made me start reevaluating things so much. Cause you think that we're all batting on the same field and there's these silent set of rules and they start to realize actually it's only us fuckers following the rules. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Where's all your uncles in, in, in this and your dad? When so let me explain something to you about my uncles. <laughs> mm. On my mum's side, in there, they're, they're as bad as us. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. we're getting coached. Yeah. 
West Street were getting coached. There's never anybody. There's always that one person in a family that distances himself from the family. And you I think had, I had, he's I had, a fucking weirdo, but he's the one that's clever. I had one, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, the one yeah, that's yeah. Not, one uncle. You're right. Who always encouraged me to do better, mm -hmm. and that's my uncle Jeffrey. God rest his soul. And that's not to say my other uncles didn't love me and care for me and want the best for me, but they grew up in the same environment. So they knew. He's so the only knew. one who ever spoke yeah, and always kept it like um, positive. Uh, he always, yeah. yeah, he always, but not even just positive though. He always kept it the, the talk on, you know, a certain path. It was never randomly going off on yeah, the street yeah. shit. Like he never did that. So my he uncle was the guy who mm. he grew up in the same environment. But that's my mother's brother. And he ended up being the only person who went to university, got a law degree, opened his own law firm, and became the first Rastafarian lawyer in the whole of the UK. That's amazing. So he's quite renowned. Yeah. Like you can you can Google this yeah. guy. <clears throat> and when he opened up his office, you know, for the first couple of years, he's become a millionaire. Do you know what I mean? A few years down the line, some 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 things happened. He ended up having a heart attack and he passed away. You see the family members when something happens, ah, there's a lot of envy. Envy. There was a lot of jealousy because yeah, somebody's yeah. made it out. There that was that happened. There, there was that hundred percent happened. Was, you just said and that. he kept on. And you know, even though he moved out and he was in an affluent area, mm -hmm. and he had by all by all you know standards had made it. That was still his home. He still came back into the ghetto. Yeah. Still played music. Everyone it's, it's rated him as well. You see, my yeah. uncle, yeah, I would yeah. be with him like mm -hmm. every day because we went gym together. And you know what's crazy is as much as he made it out is as much as he wanted the um as much as it would seem like he didn't care about getting the approval yeah. of the peeps who were he's, almost he's he wanted, he wanted he's it, still, he wanted you know, approval from the people he did, that you, you know, don't need bro. it from because he, yeah, he wanted exactly to respect that. he wanted exactly to respect that. and love him for what mm -hmm. he did because he was yeah. everything he yeah. did he kind of was but doing it, it for, for us, us. everybody in the ghetto if you had a court case, they police, went yeah, they went to my uncle, my uncle mm -hmm. represented everybody. He defended everybody. us. Yeah, so, so he was leaving times. a blueprint for people After to... he passed away and I had another police, I didn't even know what to do. I was like, hang on a second, Yo, I don't know I, because I, I the don't only know. person yeah. I ever call is my uncle. Know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, um, I, um, and as many times as we went in jail and got arrested and stuff, we had have definitely been in jail longer and done more time for things. Definitely. My uncle hadn't represented us. because we had two different surnames. He was able to just come, no one yeah. would know any different. Yeah. But we so know we, this we got our uncle, father's bro. surname. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get me? Mm -hmm. So we're in court and we're not, this is my uncle who I'm with on a daily and mm -hmm. he's in the courtroom for me. Yeah. So we had like a different type of... Should have a respect for this man. Loved yeah, him like, like yeah. a dad. Mm -hmm. When he when he passed away, that broke me. Bro, I was in jail when I heard this, bro. Yeah. And you don't understand, this is someone I was with. Let me explain something to you. Yeah. Like he used to come on... Uh, he used to come on uh, legal visits. Legal visits. Mm. But check it out, yeah. We come on the legal visit. I go into the room. He'd speak to me all formal. See, the moment we went into the room, bro, and locked the door, he'd be like, yo, so how much you mentioned? <laughs> yo, what's the way yeah, you're saying? Like, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah, no yeah, legal yeah, shit, bro. Yeah. It's my uncle. Yeah. We're going to sit in the room and talk shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it was. <laughs> and, 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 and I tell you what's oh, mad is that out, my, my uncle, I won't say his name out of respect because I, I, I don't think he'd want to say his name. But my uncle Jeff and this other uncle, his brother, they, they were best friends, do you know what I mean? And it broke him probably more than anybody because his best friends who's passed away. But it was mad to see this contrast of almost like chalk and cheese because on the one side, you got my uncle who was at one point, he he was the wickedest person in the whole ghetto. You know what I mean? Like no one can speak to this guy. And then the next generation is us, but you've got him and then his best friend and brother who is the guy who's made it. So my uncle's always encouraging him, like, you're not even supposed to be here. Like, you're the guy who made it. Like, you're the, you know what I mean? And when you see them two together, it's, it was just like a mad combination. Because one's telling you like, fuck those guys, man. You should just, <laughs> just go and kill them from, yeah. from off the roof. And then the other one, literally, <laughs> yeah, they're saying yeah. shit like that. Yeah, so you're like, just grab the guys from off the fucking roof. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. Like, that's how he's talking to you. And the other one's going, no, 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 no. That's how I'd speak to you sometimes, you know what I mean? You go from the Queen's <laughs> like English to Patois. Yeah, 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 and he'd go from talking to the big, long, dreadlocks, big dude, and you, he's, he'd be talking to you in the Queen's English or mix it into Patwa, like, because from the ghetto. Do you know what I mean? And he he was probably the only person who, although the others encouraged positive stuff for us, he was the only person who really was like, you don't need to do any of this. Particularly, I know he definitely did that with me, because even though I was doing all this stuff, I was still quite academic in school. I was still very academic. I still smart. Quite academic. Yeah, I was still very okay, I'll put, still I'll put, a smart yeah. person. All this, 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 but he really yeah, is. Yeah, I think it's really like weird, you know. Still. He's um I just give it put into context, he was um uh headhunted by some of the top universities because he got mm. the highest in the is it in the Midlands, country Midlands, Midlands, Midlands yeah. for law. Yeah, so I'll talking you know, this is, So why did you not follow it through then? I was living in the ghetto. 
Yeah, so there was hard. nothing. There was nothing else. Like, were you scared though to make changes? Were you scared of people judging you for not, trying to get out? I don't think so. I think what it was, I was just too deep in the life. Like it was like, okay, I'm all good here on this campus and doing these things, but you know, as soon as I leave here, it's real life again. Mm-hmm. Like the guys down there don't give a fuck that I'm. Um, um, <laughs> they don't care mm-hmm. that I'm trying to change my life right now. Yeah, and I, and I think the only reason why I was able to change my life was because I literally wasn't there. I wasn't available. Like by the time I had decided to make the transition and go into the gyms and kind of stay away from shit because of my kids, I was no longer accessible. Do you know what I mean? I was no longer ac- accessible and I was trying to keep, act- I was trying consciously to keep away from shit. And that's not to say sometimes I didn't get dragged into shit. Do you know what I mean? Where I'm like, no, nah, this, this requires my presence now. Do you know what I mean? But I had to make a serious conscious effort. Whereas at the time when those things were happening where I was going into my ac- academics and my uncle was encouraging me to do, go to university and those kind of things, um, I was still very much in the street. Do you know what I mean? So it was difficult for me to say, well, I'm going to do this. And then at the end of the day, when 4.15 ends and I go back into Hansworth, that they don't give a fuck. It's, it's, that life is still happening. It, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I remember going to college and um, you haven't even touched on this. It's just like, just, just loads. And um, I remember going to college anyway. I'm going to get these guys back on yourselves though. I'm yeah, going to get his wall back on your girl. Mm-hmm. Go to get the big man off the yeah, back. I'm going to get so we can go deep. For us yeah, 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 I think people can <laughs> connect with this. It's something different. It's something fresh. I'm going yeah. to put your story out first and then I'll put this out. Like he's going to get a lot of love and respect for this guy because he's a free fucking diamonds, I believe. He's a free good guy. Through some shit. But um, people are going to connect with this something. I mean, it's special. And that's the thing. We're just, we're just trying to be real. Like, we just... And it was just real life. Because yeah. I remember, like, going to college. <laughs> and then... Um, but you can see the love by the three of you. You can see these are all different characters and you are yeah, own, we, right? I, I noticed that. But you can <laughs> see the bond and the connection. Like... Look how fucking close he's are sitting, and that's not just because you're a big guy. It's like I feel as if he wants to. I don't put know if the rap. camera catches this, but he is a big <laughs> yeah, fucking he's a big guy. Fella, you know. <laughs> but um, where do you go for life now when you can through all that fucking trauma and heartache and pain, the stuff that you've actually been through to still actually being here? Yeah, you are here for a reason. I says that to Grilla earlier. Yeah. You're here for a reason. You don't go through the shit you went through. Yeah. And don't survive for nothing. So you've clearly got something to give. It's how you write that chapter and finish the end of your story to then making so. positive waves. So where do you go? I believe so. I um, feel like I feel like um, with the amount that's happened, bro, individually, we got so much different perspectives on different things, though. Because you see, like even someone like him now, yeah. I ain't been in the army. He ain't. He has. You get what I'm saying? He has a whole different perspective, bro. And all next shit that I can't tell you about. He's been through some shit that I can't tell you about. I've been through some shit he can't, you know what I'm saying? And him as a collective, bro. Bro, you, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we've we gone through each thing as much as we seem close right now, bro. We've gone through each thing by ourselves. You get what I'm saying? Everything he went through, I'm sure it's going to feel to him like he literally went through that by himself. Bro, after I got, you see, like, even um, after I got, was that stabbed? After I got stabbed, yeah, and he went, uh, joined the army a little, little bit. Was it a little bit after that? Yeah, yeah, it, was, it wasn't, wasn't too long after that. So even between, so like, me and him now, yeah, it's like, a scenario like that, you got into the army, I feel alone now. Yeah, because we was together every, I ain't every spoke day. spoke about this before, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You'd be surprised what these feelings do to you and how they change your behavior. Like, but I could have just said, hey, I feel lonely where you're going. <laughs> I didn't say that shit, though. No. Yeah. We were taught not to say yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's a sense of self harming as well. You, know you kind of just accept it to fuck with your own but mind. The craziest yeah, thing is, I'm sure he didn't think of it that way. He ain't going to think of it in, uh, you know, he's just doing what he feels is yeah. best for his next move. I'll tell you something as well. Yeah, I don't know, I've never been proud of this man. Mm-hmm. as much as I was when he joined the military. I tell him this all the time. You know, for whatever reasons, it, it never worked out with him, with, him, with him being there and ending up having a long long career with the military. But when I saw him say, I'm fucking off out of this place. I'm going to join the military. I'm, I, was, I was with him when he went to the uh, recruitment place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, you're doing it. Was that like, on a second occasion? Must have been on the second occasion. Because I was confused on the first one. <laughs> like, he'd remember, he'd never bro. spoken to us about this shit. I think it was just a case of... You know, we trying to get away shit. from everything. Was a lot it was of a bit like that, you. man. And you know what? I'll be honest, man. I beat a few cases. We're talking like, 
you know, few gun charges. When I went there, I was, I was on a gun charge still, man. And I, I, I was quite straight with them. said, listen, I've, you know, I'm on this. The, the, and I remember the guy in the recruitment office looking at me like, Ah, don't worry about it. Let's fucking sign up here, lad. That's just like, 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 fucking, that's just like, fucking sweet, then yeah, I fucking signed the line, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, uh, yeah, it was one of them. It was one of them. It's mad though, because there's a contrast, because that's what I'm saying about like, everyone's relationships and how important talking is, because like, as much as he's making his next step and then feeling like, yo, boom, this is for me. I'm here, bro, feeling like, bro, I've been not betrayed, but I don't know what next word is. Like, I feel abandoned. like- Abandoned. Yeah, abandoned. Right, right, abandoned. Right, right, like, right, bro, right, right. yo, that's my, yo, when you see what, yo, when we were younger, they thought we were twins, bro. Yeah. Don't know how they made that mistake. <laughs> 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 we did always thought we were twins. So my point is, yeah, even though for him, it might seem like one thing, for me, it was a whole complete different thing, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. whatever experience he had when he went there, Bro, I don't know what that was. But you're I the younger brother as well and different. with the abandonment issues, uh, but, yeah. The thing is though, it's like everything I saw him doing and accomplishing though, I loved it. Yeah. But then bro, as soon as I stopped thinking about that thing and I go thinking back to my yeah. reality, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. it's like I'm on my one I'll tell you again. something, man. It was you weird, man, seeing this the, the changes. His back was straighter, his chin was higher. Confident. His shoes were shinier. You know what I'm saying? Check this out, check this out. When he came, when he came back here, yeah. and like he would come on like the uh, the weekend leaves and that. But Tree had his own like family going on. We wouldn't see him every weekend. Yeah, yeah. So when we did though, yeah, I remember one occasion, this always sticks with me. Let's see if you remember, you probably remember this. Well, he came and he said to me, yo, who'd you, uh, you been chilling with? And I was like, no one still. He was like, you don't chill with no one. This is what he's asked me. And I said, nah. Mind you, I'm a very well-known person, bro. I could make two calls. And yeah, every, every, everyone, people, every nigga wants to fucking yeah. be with him, you know yeah. what I mean? But he's asked me this, bro, and I'm like, I actually don't want to chill with anyone. Truth be told, bro, I didn't want to chill with no one after he went to the army. I'm good. I got it by myself then. You get what I'm saying? And it's like it does something to you without you realising, bro. That's where you'll find your change. Way more yeah. you know? You'll find your change, though. With you, when you're surrounded by other people, you're getting all their information, all their bullshit, all their energies. When you yourself, that's when you really figure out who the fuck you are. Yeah. It's not the same as when you're in prison, you're sitting in a cell. You're not really, even though you got a lot of time to think, it's still not the same because it's condensed, it's nasty, it's negative. But when you're in the house yourself out in freedom, yeah. you, you fucking look at things differently. And probably you going to the army's probably saved your life. You, the well, man, fucking that, hell. <laughs> even when he get found with the, when they threw the gun away and the man stuck him in we spoke about it earlier he's saved your life because you've probably been in prison yeah, now yeah. doing a lifer and, and then that ends up Definitely. affecting you again so the threes could be potentially fucking dead or all doing lifers like mm -hmm. life works in mysterious ways I can see you as free talking in schools I can see you as free well, it's funny lives. though because I actually do some of that stuff now yeah, do you? yeah I do I do so um, I don't really speak about my Philanthropy. Mm -hmm. I pronounced that right. Philanthropy. <laughs> philanthropy. <laughs> uh -huh. Philanthropy. And what's that? Um, basically, the you know my my giving back to the community. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and when I'd go give like little talks to the schools and the, the mm -hmm. troublesome kids and the kids who are on the verge of ending up in that street life or doing some serious crime or people that have just come out from doing crimes but they've still got a chance to turn their life around. And I do often, um, I go into like certain places, certain centers, certain schools, and I, I try to talk to those guys. And it, it's, it's good for them to have somebody who's got lived experience, because mm -hmm. I've been there, bro. Like I'm try, I try to explain to these kids, every single thing we can imagine going through, I've done it. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that, I mean, I've done it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes you get through to some, sometimes you don't, they have to learn the hard way. Um, but you know, if there's a couple of guys that I can get through to, Mm -hmm. And change their life and change their, their their path. Then, yo, my job, my job's done, man. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm talking to my son over there. Um, the other day, I had to give him a call, ask him if he's okay because in his area, the area that he currently lives in, there's fucking murders every, get every week. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. And I had to um, I had to give him a call, say, you know, son, are you okay? Because whenever I hear it, it's really close to home, so I just call him to see if he's okay. And uh, it turns out that, you know, one of the guys, well, he's friends with all of them. He's one of the guys who went to school with the other guys he's friends with. And, you know, my son was wounded and I'm thinking to myself, man, shit, that's, that could easily be my son just chilling with one of these guys one of the days. He ends up roped in. And even then, I have to say to my son, because mm -hmm. like I've said to you right now in this interview, it's probably, it's the first time my son's heard any of this shit come from my lips. I'm being very candid in front of him right now. I say to him, son, 
please. Please don't hang around with these guys. I understand they're your friends, but please don't put me in a situation where I feel like I need to involve myself. And I don't know if my son's ever understood what that means. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It probably does now. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? If they initiate, but it's because I know the lengths I will go to for a personal love. I've done it for him. Mm. And I would do it in a heartbeat well, for my for my child, you know what I mean? So And we ain't even mentioned none of the occasions that were just quick. You know, like something happened and a person just got their teeth punched out real quick mm. or something. We ain't even <laughs> mentioned none of those occasions. Yeah, you get yeah. me? We've only we just you know mm. what I'm saying. You hold a lot of emotion, Mike. So you do. I can see you hold your heart in your sleeve, like I yeah. see you feel as he if you always want to cry. Like because I so, think so, you feel the pain of the past. Yeah, do sometimes that, that does happen, man. That does happen. Do you do regret you know I mean? it? It does. Some some of it. Some of it. Do you know what I mean? I live somebody told me one time, you look like you got sad eyes, Mike. I was like, it's probably because I've been punched in both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But um Yeah, yeah man, there's, shit, there's, there's, there's a lot yeah. of regret, man. You know, a lot of like I said, a lot of responsible I feel responsible for a lot of shit that's happened. You know, even with my sister, I feel responsible for a lot of that shit that's gone on with that. That's another story. We'll my probably sister's story another time. will blow you. She crazy. Bro, she's, she's out of the she's minute. Out she's, out the moment. she's wanted. She's wanted though. Wanted yeah, she wanted. Still get her on, mate. Police, yeah, police, bro, <laughs> police have come. Police have come. I'm like, I don't even know who you're Fair talking about. There, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And the thing is, you see, with my sister as well, bro, it's mad, yeah, because she don't understand how much she has that she could give back. She doesn't. I know. She, my sister doesn't even understand the potential. None of her, bro. Like, she. If she just got to a certain place, yeah, she'd have so much. But fun. I feel but, that but, with use free yeah, also. Yeah. I feel that with yeah. use free. So with you seeing your sister, I see in use free. Mm. I see goodness. I see kindness. I see loyalty, strength. Yeah. But also see pieces there that are also broken. Yeah, man. And mm. we're trying to, like we said, man. We're, yeah, we're from man. an environment where we've never, we never, we were never taught to get those pieces fixed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but as things have changed, to crack man. on with it. Exactly. Things have fucking you know. changed. That's got, where you're going to heal. Yeah. Just talking what, about it. Tell you something. One thing about my sister, I've always said, I'm glad she wasn't born a guy, man. It should oh, be worse than all of us combined. I love that. She should have been a man. She's the same to him. How, like, mm. She's done more job than all of she's us. She's worse than us all, man. Been, if she like, was ever a man, I'm just so glad she isn't. Do you she, know what I mean? Shirting would be rude. Wild. Wild. Yeah. How hard is that, though, like Christmases and birthdays when people are missing? And It's been nuts. Did we do the first The first Christmas that we've had together in about 10 years was last year. Did we, was we, we all together? We weren't all together, bro. Wasn't you there, Christmas? Where? Where? Mom? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We were all there? Nah, we were bro. All there? We were? Nah, no, I wasn't, bro. You was I, there, bro? Nah, bro. Didn't I come earlier? I didn't see you. Yeah, but you leave. was there. Yeah, nah, nah, you didn't see me leave. leave. We're having the bay and whatever it is. We're there together. This is how serious it is. Like, nah, are we together? Are we not together? We're there together. Factual, the last time we were all together was in Zion. In Zion Bar, bro, when Back I took the picture. Back in 2000... I got a picture on my Instagram 16. right now. 2016? The one, you know what 16, Zion, I was gone. You know what I'm saying? You know what you know day I'm talking about, though? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Your birthday. Remember that? Was it my birthday? The surprise party. Yeah, yeah. That weren't my that birthday. Was, oh, that, that was, was one, one of my birthday. after. It was one of your. Must have been one of my after parties for my fights. Yeah. 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 Every time we had a, every time I have a fight, you're going to get another parties. fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let us know, cause I'll come. I will, man. I was meant to be. I was meant to be fighting in um in Yo, you know July. Yeah, Dan Tows, Yeah, he's got that. Brand now, you know, the watches. Darren Till? I need to do yeah, some Darren Till was meant to be coming to visit in our gym. I yeah. might be yeah. 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 What's his he's name? Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Your man, uh, Tom Aspinall, I man, is mate mm. of mine. Well, um, um, and uh, Andy Clamp as well from down in parts. But um, what was I saying now? What was I saying? Oh, after my fight. Mm -hmm. So I was meant to be fighting in um, July. And that's the last time we was And um, it, just, it, just, it just clashed with a couple of things that I was doing and I, I couldn't, I can't commit the time to training. And if I'm, not, it's my first, it'll be my first fight since 2019 because of all this COVID shit. Mm -hmm. So I want to, you know, apply myself and have the proper kind of camp, camp and mind frame mm -hmm. for it. You know what I'm saying? So maybe about September. How do you feel after that camp? Do you feel more at peace when you're training like hard? Dog shit, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting fucked yeah. up every day. So what's really? the plans for the freeze then moving forward for the future? What about um, your cell shake? You know, so I've, you know, I've come out of jail after doing a little lengthy sentence and, um, I was just kind of finding myself, you know what I mean? But then the opportunity arose, I was doing a bit of construction and shit. Um, then the opportunity arose with um, a guy that I actually I met through being in jail. And um, he started his own company and his business. And um, we've just started bumping heads and we're just trying to push that forward. So at the minute, what we're doing is we actually deliver higher education and careers education to schools and young mm -hmm. people and stuff. So um, 
that's kind of like the focus at the minute. But um, really what I'm focused on at the minute is just giving back and just developing on myself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because at the minute, just like you've been hearing, it's like we're kind of on a road to self-discovery on it. And That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, which, which which we never kind of really, yeah. we never really looked at. I don't think none of us have really delved deep into ourselves and said, yeah. yo, who am I, bro? Like, mm -hmm. what, what am I supposed to be here for? You know what I mean? Like, what's my destiny? What am I supposed to be? Mm -hmm. And I always feel like you need to give back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So as much as you want to take and gain, you, you need to be giving back along your journey. Oh, that's you know the what gift I mean? in life. But then 100%. again, you've got books in you, you've got documentaries, possibly films. The world is yours. Mm -hmm. It's just how much you want to fucking grasp it and use your pain for success. It's as simple 100%, as that. What about 100%. yourself, Grilla? I've spoken earlier about where are, we, where are we going? How do you feel about listening to your brothers, first of all? Well, you know, <clears throat> it's mad because, um, especially like, you know, you go to do, you do, you go to do something like this and you, you assume... You're gonna know some stuff the person's gonna <laughs> say already. Then there's mm -hmm. gonna be some shit you're gonna discover as well. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. for me, bro, this communication right here, yeah, like this is fucking. This is like uh, to me, this is coming like therapy, bro. Like this is this is how I like this shit. You know what I'm saying? My little brother likes to talk. I know. I know. I'm sat with for two hours. <laughs> 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 Trust me. But nah, yeah. for real though, man. I feel like you see, like uh, the way my bro is breaking it down, though, man. It's all, it's always uh, whatever your journey is, though, bro. You have to be giving back along that way. You get. Yeah. Me? I feel like when you don't give it back along the way, shit can fuck up. I feel like stuff goes very smooth, bro. When you see a lot at the end, when you're doing your journey, but giving at the same time, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. And right now, like I said, we all got a lot to offer, man. I feel like whether it's whether it's me doing music. Whether it's me doing, uh, you know, this uh, production company, whether it's some shit with the Utes, whatever it is, bro, I feel like as long as we push forward, bro, I feel like each yeah. of us, bro, only yeah. destined for great greatness, things, bro. I Go for I'm. it, bro. What about yourself, Mikey? Uh, mate, I've got my finger in so many pies right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm older <laughs> than like me back in the day. I've got so many kids, <laughs> bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I got <laughs> yeah, man. I'm I'm older than these guys, so I've got a bit more urgency to my shit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm reaching the the kind of twilight years of my fighting career, so I'm I'm not naive enough to think that'll go on forever. I've I've achieved quite a lot, and I'm still f um, training with real high level guys. So I still got a few. You know, just got a new management deal, a new management company, Kings. Um, so they're helping me with the, the the stages of my career. You know, there's some 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 promotions on the table after my contract finishes with Cage Warriors, maybe better tour, maybe one FC, those kind of places. For me, we're fighting now, it's about big money fights and kind of just the, the, the final years of my career, getting some dough, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, but, and also the problem is with peep fighters is they have no exit strategy. So that's why they end up having a few fights too many, getting some brain injuries and yeah. shit like that. And you, you're watching great fighters fight while they're over the hill. And I've never wanted to be that guy. So at the moment, I've got a, um, I'm in business with a friend of mine. Um, we're, we're running a security company, um, RG8 facilities. That's what we're doing at the minute. We've kind of got some clients kind of nationwide. It's going okay at the minute. We'll leave, all, we'll leave all the links in the yeah. description. So I mean, he, he hasn't even videos. spoke about any of the security um, stuff. Yeah, That's man, a whole that different shit, yeah, yeah, ball yeah, game yeah, and yeah, journey yeah, because yeah, um, he's like I do body, hard man, but yeah, bodyguarding, close protection and shit like that, looking after mm. the people in the city. We even scratched we haven't scratched the surface, scratched the surface man. That's yeah, what we did. I'm going to get you all yeah. on no. separately again yeah, yeah. so we can connect better. Um, this is more a journey of three yeah, brothers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Try to get so, a bit of um, openness you know, from the three I was, I was lucky enough because because of my because of just being known as a, a hard man of the city, mm -hmm. I've been able to get a lot of opportunities within the security sector and close protection and shit. Do you know what I mean? Looking after celebrities and stuff. So I've got that aspect of the, the company that we're dealing with. Um, but then also I've, I've started to make um, the transition into acting. So from the from the the fighting the sports personality into actually f f stage and movies, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's coming on all right. Did you do a bit, bro? Look at this, bro. See what yeah. I'm saying? He did that shit. Now I'm I'm on that shit. And too, um, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For, for for me, I'm a I'm a person. I'm very Basically much. Uh, everything in I was talking to my brother about this in the car. I'm very much. Uh, I get something in my head. I'm like, okay, we're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. you yeah, believe. I, mean? I will just do it. And mm -hmm. if it fails a few times, I don't give a shit. Like I must keep yeah. trying to do it until we figure out the the best way. You know, to do it. You look at the Guy Ritchie films and that as well. Do you know what I mean? You look at fucking Snatch, you look at The Gentleman, Bugsy Malone, just 
It's just fucking doing nothing. You don't there need you to go, be an just actor. Get, just, just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and that's, and that's the yeah. thing. If anyone that's watching this, you know, now they've come to, to, to this part of the, the episode, if you have a dream or an aspiration or something you want to do, get up and fucking do it. Mm-hmm. Just get up and we do it. We were talking about <laughs> this, yeah, show, bro, yeah. and not allowing yeah. other people, though, to dim your shit when you're talking about it and mm-hmm. throw that fucking negativity on it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And make yeah. you throw your well, idea I, out the window. You know, you know, you know where I got this mentality from as well? Um, I have to big up um, a brother named Cypher from Birmingham. Um, yeah, real, real him. humble brother, yeah, pioneer, man. always sought to, to, to do us, do us well, and our, our best intentions at heart. When my, bro- when my brother was in hospital, trying to, was the shell of the man after being recovering from those, those stab wounds, Cypher was bringing him food every day. Every no, day, let me man. break this down to you. Let me break this down to you. Every day. It wasn't even though he was just bringing the food. Though this guy would be bring crates of stuff. Though yeah, yeah. and mum mom was mum was amazed by when she yeah. seen him doing all this. Right. Mind you, this guy's much older than me. He's, he's much older. He's, than he's, he's an elder you for know me. What I'm saying mm. like proper. You know when you say elder, bro, like he really is. But this guy ain't one of those ones where he just demands the title. Like, bro, he plays. He, his he position. plays his position. Yeah, like this guy is our elder. The so, first time I even recorded a music tune, bro, was him yeah. saying he had a big studio at the time. People, all different types of artists, bro, will go there from around the world, bro, and go to the studio and join yeah. the choir. This guy gave me the keys, bro. Showed me on the computer, this is how you do this. I he got, said, stay here and record, bro. <laughs> I got a lot of love for Cypher. I mean, I mean yeah, you know, one, where, where we're from, you hear the term, I bust my gun for that person. <laughs> and that basically means I'd, I'd kill for that person. I'd go to jail for that person. I'd do anything for that person. We've literally been there with Cypher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. literally yeah. you know yeah. what yeah. I mean? But Cypher was a, he's a, he's a very humble man and he um, is one of the pioneers from the music industry. He was part of a group called Moorish Delta 7. Anyway, I say all that to say this. I remember one day, first of all, watching, some, if you see Cypher where he was to where he is now, mm-hmm. you can see he's a just get up and do it kind of guy. But I remember it was something very simple that happened to me. Um, at the time, I didn't drive. We're talking the early 2000s, maybe 2005, 2006. And uh, I wasn't driving at the time. And he was saying, do, do you drive? And I can't remember why he even asked me. I was like, not yet, man. I'm gonna, I have to learn how to drive. And he was like, just get in a car and drive. And I was like, what the fuck does this guy mean, man? I can't just get in a car. You want to kill somebody. You want to get arrested. Like, what would you want me to do? And what I realized was it was a, it wasn't, it was symbolic. It was a metaphor, what he was saying. Mm-hmm. He was saying, bro, if you want to do something, about you don't it. talk about this shit and think about it. Just go, go, go and do it. That. Mm-hmm. And that's what he meant. Yeah. And that stuck with me in my head to this very day. Mm-hmm. Every day I think to myself, just get in a car and drive. Mm-hmm. And so anytime I have an idea or endeavor that I want to do, I just get up and I do it. And that's how I live. And if anybody else hears this, I hope that they can just think the same way. Do you know what I mean? You did it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're doing it now. You're yeah. doing it right now. Like you, you yeah, thought to yourself, I want to do this shit and look now. Do this. Yeah. you know what I mean? For anybody watching that's in the battle, maybe it's in prison, maybe it's going through, it's basically Birmingham, all the shit that's happening on the streets, people want to be bad men. What advice would you give for them? Talk to the people that have been through it already. Because I can guarantee you it's not all glitz and glamour. I guarantee you that it's not all glitz and glamour. And those people will have some advice and some shit to tell you. That would definitely change your mind about a lot of things. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. What it's, about your gorilla? What about you? Go on. No, go on. You're on your shake. I, I, I was gonna say, um, to what I've told a lot of the young guys that I deal with now, and um, even some of the, you know, active young guys. Even when I was in jail, and I'm talking to guys, and it's kind of funny because, um, as much as I see some of these olders that I even I look up, I used to look up to anyway. At least, I realized no one's giving any of these guys any good information, man. They're just feeding them with piss, poor bullshit and mm. false hopes and false pretenses and everything that encompasses and anything that's to do with it is fake, bro. The truth is this, you're gonna be fighting for a postcode, fighting for whoever or saying that these guys are your ups, your enemies, literally killing each other, bro. They're acquiring wealth to buy weapons, bro kill dudes that it's no fault of their own their mum so happened to get given a council house in a that she area. probably barely can pay rent for in the area and now you're saying you want to kill that you because he's from that area bro and your mum don't even own her house so you're saying that yo mm. I want to kill somebody because I'm repping the ends that you don't even own shit in bro 
you don't own the house, bro. You're renting barely. You feel me? Yeah. So I say, yeah. I say, stop listening to the to this fakeness that's out there, bro. Don't look at Instagram. See all that shit is fake, man. Keep it real to yourself. Yeah, keep it real to yourself. Be honest with yourself. See, being real. And this is what a lot of people get mixed up. They think being real is by being on the road or being violent or selling drugs or whatever it is. Bro, it's just about being real to yourself. Mm -hmm. So when that guy comes up to you and says, yo, yo, roll with me. Let's just go out of town and start selling some, you know, some fucking coke or whatever, make loads of dough or whatever. Bro, you was going to college, be real to yourself. Say, actually, no, I want to go college, bro, and do that. Say, actually, nah, I don't want to go and stab that geezer because he comes from some different area. Be real to yourself and say, you know what, actually, mm. I'm not about that. Like, you feel me? Like, just be real and be yeah. honest with yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. How about you, Grella? Well, it's a bit of the same thing, you know. It's a bit of the same thing, man. I feel like it's important understanding who you are and staying just true to that, man. Like, because too many times, you know, like you said, you have your plan. Yeah, man. But you deterred from it because of what you saw this person doing or this one or, you know what I'm saying? And we, like, we get it because we grew up in the same shit. But that's why we can say this. Because we know, yo, had we had just stuck to our plan, where we would all fucking on, be right now, on, you know what I'm on. saying? Had you already pointed it out, bro, like we would have been to these spots ages ago, but instead we went about this completely different, you know what I'm saying? And we've had to go through a whole bunch of just heartache, deaths, this, that, bro, you name it, bro, jail, whatever the fuck, bro. Like, it ain't even like just he went through it, bro, we've all been through it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you definitely don't need to go about it that way. You can definitely have an easier yeah. life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Easy, and if we had to go through this shit so that we can then be in this position to just break it down like this, then obviously yeah. is what it is. You Lads, know what I'm make it. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, Good pleasure, luck man. with the fights. Grill up again, <laughs> big man. Cheers. Absolute Love listen, lads. I'm going to get his on again, though. Separately, yeah, yeah, part yeah. two again, yeah, and we'll yeah. shoot the shit. We'll go in deeper, but I think people will get a lot from this conversation. It's powerful, it's deep. I think you three need to work on a lot of stuff and open up with your father, your mum, whatever. Definitely, I'm going to see me now, yeah, right? Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And put all the shit on the table because I think that's where you'll, you'll, you'll thrive even more. Just putting a lot of that resentment. You yeah, just right, all that shit with your brother, people leaving you and having it all there and trying to store it away, it eventually consumes you, eventually eats you away. So just, you know what? This is what we do. We sit down. There might be a lot of fights, arguments. People might not like a lot of shit, but I guarantee you'll feel fucking feel amazing after well, it, man. But lads, absolutely phenomenal, man. Thank God you very blessings. much, man. Take care. 100%. Cheers. Check out more of my podcasts on the right. And be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.